uncanny valley. What on earth am I talking about? Let's take a journey. Have you ever had that uncomfortable feeling when looking at robotics or animatronics that are sort of human-like, but frankly, creepy? This feeling is what Masahiro Mori in 1970 coined the uncanny valley. It's the idea that in robotics, there's a growing affinity when a robot becomes more human-like, and then we in turn feel more favorable toward the robot but then they become too close to humanness while still having the awkward, soulless, jerky motions of a machine, and we get really uncomfortable. This is the point where kids cry. This is clearly not human. The same thing happens when we see computer graphics in movies, that they're close, but so, so far. Consider the concept for a moment. There comes a point where we get closer to the real and we feel increasingly more uncomfortable. I would like to put forth that the same concept exists in realist art. A smiley face, a cartoon, we readily accept. It's representational, but it's not trying to be an exact representation. It's not trying to fool us into it being real. There's an entire genre of art called trompe l'oeil, which means deceives the eye. What a representational painter is trying to achieve is an illusion of life. We all know there are many subtleties to reality, and that doesn't matter if we're trying to achieve that in robotics or painting. That kind of extreme realism in painting or robotics is very difficult or near impossible to achieve. The only person I know who comes remotely close to achieving this in contemporary realism is Anthony Wychulis. You should check out his work. It'll blow your mind. The one advantage to painting over robotics in imitating realism is in painting, we have static imagery, whereas in robots, we have interaction and movement. Have you seen BeatBots? They're a bunch of cute robots that can interact with sound and touch. Merrick Michalowski, the co-founder of BeatBots purposefully increases affinity to robots by pursuing non-human design. This way, he intentionally avoids the uncanny valley. He says, do not try to slavishly imitate life, but exaggerate it and make it appealing. He also talks about another concept in his design of these little guys. Form matches capability. By that, you can expect a little keep on to have the limited abilities it has when you see it. This poses an interesting dilemma for realist artists. The answer, it would seem, is don't even try to achieve the real. I guess I'm stubborn, and I don't simply want to move toward abstraction or naivete in order to avoid the discomforting, static, plastic feeling of hyperrealism. I want to find the sweet spot. This is why painting realism is so hard, and especially so for those of us in the figurative realm. Let's take some of these concepts and apply them to realist painting. Number one, avoid the uncanny valley. We know it's there. I wanna argue that as painters, we shouldn't attempt exact realism. The result of attempting exact realism to capture every hair, freckle, thread, piece of lint, ends in a static, overly produced painting. The painting tried so hard, but in the end, it just looks plastic. Does the public find awe in the level of detail in paintings like that? Absolutely. You know, they ask, wow, how'd you do that? But it lacks life, it's brittle, and frankly, it's kind of uncomfortable. The skilled painter will know when to show restraint. That can come in many forms. For me, I stop when it holds space. Does what I'm painting feel volumetric? Is it sitting in space? Number two, form matches capability. Know your limits. You're not a camera. A camera slavishly represents the reality it can take in. Personal rant here, please don't paint camera depth of field effects. End personal rant. You're a painter. What does the viewer expect from painting as an art medium? What is painting capable of? Match it formally. 
Good representational painting expresses what is happening while also making the painting approachable and alive. In this, you've also got to consider your own skill level. Knowing what level you can execute realism can help you know how far to go. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. How do you find your sweet spot? Have you ever entered into the uncanny valley? Leave your comment below and let me know what you think. Appreciate it. Hello, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful toward your goals and becoming the artist you're meant to be. Here's some other videos you might like and click over here to subscribe. If you wanna see the channel flourish and ensure continued content, share this with a friend or join my Patreon link below. And remember, never stop painting.